Welcome to Know Your Universe, right here at Comic Story, and the series in which we just explain the elements of the comic book universe that you need to know so that you can understand your movies, comic books, or TV shows better. Batwoman is the character that has been announced as the central focal point of the Arrowverse crossover in 2018 for the entire Arrowverse. That's the Arrow Show, the Flash Show, the Legends of the Tomorrow, and the Supergirl Show. Batwoman is also going to be played by Ruby Rose, but a lot of people don't know who Batwoman is. So let's tell you about that. Originally appearing in Detective Comics number 233 in 1956, Batwoman was created when the DC editors decided to expand the Batman family based on the popularity of the Superman family. A female was created to take away some of the heat that Batman and Robin had been getting since publishing the infamous book Seduction of the Innocent, which, among many other allegations of how comic books are corrupting the youth of America, alleged that Batman and Robin were in a homosexual relationship, and they were leading young men to become gay. Batwoman was introduced as a love interest to Batman, which is ironic, but more on that later. There have been two major characters that use the name Batwoman, but their stories are decades apart. Kathy Kane was the original Batwoman introduced during the Silver Age of Comics. As a wealthy socialite and former circus performer, man, I miss the days when you could be a well-to-do socialite and circus performer and not get weird stares while at the golf course or at the cigar clubs. Kathy Kane decided to use her wealth and skills to become a crime fighter, adopting the yellow jumpsuit with a red mask, cape, and boots. She also sported a yellow utility purse instead of a belt because she was a woman and this was the 50s. The main reason for her decision to become Batwoman was to attract the romantic interest of Batman. Eventually, Batwoman would gain her own sidekick when the editors decided to expand the Bat family. Further, Kathy's niece Betty was introduced as the original Bat Girl. Matching Kathy's romantic interest in Batman, Betty was portrayed as having an interest in Robin because the two of them are totally not gay. Stop asking. Kathy and Betty would then guest star randomly throughout the Silver Age from 1956 until about 1964. But despite being very popular with the fans, they were erased from DC's canon along with several other characters when it was decided that the Bat family was becoming too big and it needed to be cleared out. After her death, Kathy would no longer exist in DC continuity until 1982. She was featured in the story of Earth 2, which was the multiverse version where all of DC's Golden Age stories still existed. As is often the case in comics, deaths aren't always something that lasts forever. The end of the massive event was known as the Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it would alter the course of DC continuity and bring Kathy and Betty Kane back into existence. While their crime-fighting personas no longer existed, the two were once again alive and well. Kathy Kane's Batwoman persona would be restored to DC canon by writer Grant Morrison during his run on the Batman-related books. After taking up writing duties, Morrison stated that he wanted to treat the entire history of Batman since his origins as canon. Her origins were revealed in Batman Incorporated number 4, and it gets weird, so stay with me. Kathy was introduced as Bruce's aunt by marriage. At one point, Kathy and Bruce fought crime together, and for a time, they were lovers. Ew. Until she was killed. She's not dead because of comics. After her death, she served as an agent and assassin for the organization Spiral. Kathy would later reappear during Dick Grayson's time spent undercover in Spiral as Agent Zero. The modern version of Batwoman wouldn't appear until 2006, upon the end of the event called Infinite Crisis. In the series, simply called 52, which chronicled the missing year after Infinite Crisis, the new Batwoman was introduced as Kate Kane. Unlike the Silver Age version, the new Batwoman was depicted as gay. And that's the irony! When asked why the character's sexual orientation was changed, DC Comics executive editor Dan Dido was quoted as stating that it was from conversations that they have had about expanding the DC universe. They were looking for levels of diversity and they wanted to have a cast that was much more reflective of today's society and even today's fan base. At the age of 12, Kate, her twin sister and her mother were going out for waffles and chocolate and they were attacked by a gunman and their bodyguards were killed. Kate's father, a US Army colonel, attempts a rescue mission and gets both Kate's mother and sister killed. Years later, Kate attends West Point, where she excels and is the top of her class. When it comes out that she is in a lesbian relationship, Kate is ordered by her commanding officer to deny the allegations. Refusing to lie and violate the code of the academy and her own ethics, Kate is expelled from West Point. With the support of her father for upholding her honor and integrity, she moves to Gotham City to attend college and pursue a life of partying. At this time, she meets and starts a relationship with Renee Montoya, who hides her own sexual orientation from the rest of the police force. 
One night, Kate is attacked by a mugger who definitely chose the wrong person to mess with, and using her combat training, she easily defeats her attacker just as Batman shows up. Based off her own experience and meeting up with Batman, she briefly began fighting crime using nothing but body armor and stolen military hardware. Kate eventually decided to travel the globe, and after two years and training with her father's military friends, she mirrored Bruce Wayne's own global studies. Returning to Gotham, Kate's father once again earns the title of Father of the Year by presenting his daughter with her own bat suit, experimental weaponry, and a bunker in the basement of the Kane residence. Kate would then appear throughout the 52 series and randomly in Detective Comics until she got her own chance to shine. Batwoman became the lead of Detective Comics during issues 854 to 863 after the battle for the cow saw Bruce's apparent death, and, and well, not death, and Dick Grayson taking on the role of Batman. The series would show Batwoman fighting against the religion of crime and a new villain known as Alice, who uses the Alice in Wonderland persona, but for some reason is not working with the Mad Hatter, in case you were wondering. We would also see more into her personal life and the toll that crime fighting has taken on her and her relationships. Toward the end of her run, it was revealed that Alice was actually Kate's sister, who we had thought was dead, and after the revelation, Alice falls to her death after Kate is unable to save her. This tragedy takes its toll on our hero. Batwoman would then go on to star in several miniseries, working along Batman and the Justice League until the dawn of the New 52. The series saw her working with the Bat family in her own cast of characters, and they expanded on that. In issue 17, we saw her propose to Maggie Sawyer, which would bring its own form of controversy. In 2013, co-authors J.H. Williams and W. Hayden Blackman decided to leave the book and they stated that the creative differences with DC over storylines, including not being allowed to show Kate and Maggie getting married, were their main reasons for leaving. DC made a statement on the marriage storyline stating that Batwoman cannot be married because heroes shouldn't have happy personal lives. With DC's Rebirth soft reboot, Batwoman would once again be featured in Detective Comics, serving as a partner to Batman in training a new team of heroes that included Red Robin, Spoiler, Orphan, and Clayface. Batwoman would once again receive her own series under the Rebirth line, which showed Kate traveling the globe, hunting down villains outside of Gotham, and therefore Batman's jurisdiction, and unfortunately that series was canceled at issue 18. Now she has gone on to battle against the team in Detective Comics, and where she currently is is kind of undecided at the moment. So what do you think about Batwoman? Are you happy that she's being introduced into the Arrowverse? Do you think that they're going to be incorporating her into the whole Batman mythos, or that she's going to be completely separate from all of that? Let me hear your thoughts down below, and I'll see you next time right here at Comic Story. And don't forget, you can find me over on Twitter, at Comic Story, and I'll see you next time right here.